We're just going to read verse 17 this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I want to take this verse right here, and I want to just speak to you on the subject, what it means to be in Christ, what it means to be in Christ. Father, take these next few minutes. Let me help your people. Lord, we've come. We've put everything up together this morning for one purpose, to talk about you. That's the name. That's the only name worthy of talking about. I pray that this morning you'd allow me to be a help to thy people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. (laughs) Stop playing your video games back there and we could get this thing on. I grew up, I think I'm a little bit hot up here. If you could just, I say hot, that means this is hot. This is just a little bit loud up here. I grew up in a preacher's home, born in a preacher's home, and so therefore I started going to church at a very young age. From my infancy, and I was I was in the church nurseries, and then I grew up, went started going to Sunday school, and was in Sunday school for every service, and heard my my dad was my pastor, and began to listen to my dad preach, and I had not lived what we call what we call a wicked life. What the world would say is a wicked life. There's some of you, you were, if I was to say, how many of you were saved? You don't have to raise your hand. How many of you were saved out of a bad life? Many of you could raise your hand and say, I was saved out of a bad life. You could talk about what you did before you got saved. And then there's some of us, we just grew up in a preacher's home. And, and, and we, and mom and dad kind of, they, they insulated us from those things of the world. And we grew up in the home like that. And that's what kind of home I grew up in. I had never wrecked my life in sin. I, but my, I was still lost, but I had an awareness of God. Now I want you to listen very careful to this. I had an awareness that there was a God. I had an awareness that there was a Savior. I knew that Jesus died on the cross. I knew that God created the world. I knew that I'd heard all the Bible stories growing up. Are you with me so far? I'd heard them all. You know, how can you not? You grow up in church and you, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, the, the, I'm always amazed as I, as I'm around church, as I'm around people, how many people have not heard certain stories in the scriptures, but I grew up around it. It's second nature to me. It would be like a guy who grew up in a mechanic's home. That little young man would know everything about an engine, could tell you everything about an engine. Someone who grows up in a, compu- in the, in a home of someone who does computers could tell you everything about the computers. But yet here, here I am. I grew up in a preacher's home. I had an awareness of God, but God was not my Savior. One day, it was a Thursday night. My mom was giving devotions. My dad was out knocking on doors, telling people how to go to heaven. That night is June 21st, 1973. I was, I was, um, I, we lived in Conway, South Carolina at the time, and my mom was, she was giving us devotions that night, and for the first time in that, in that devotions that night, I realized that not, I, that an awareness of God was not enough. I realized for the first time I needed a Savior. That night, when my mom was done doing the devotions, that night I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I said, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Can you show me how? My mom sent my brother and my two sisters to bed. 
She then sat me down on my couch. She opened the scriptures and she began to go through the scriptures that night and show me from the word of God how Alan Domley could get saved and go to heaven. That night I knelt down beside my couch and I received Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And from that night until the day I die, I know where I'm going. I'm on my way to heaven. Heaven is my home. I'm not, I'm not going to heaven because because I'm a preacher's kid. God knows that's not why I'm going to heaven. I'm, go, I'm not going to heaven because I go to church. I'm not going to heaven because I'm a Baptist. I'm not going to heaven because I got baptized. I'm going to heaven because I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be my Savior. That's why Alan Domley is going to heaven. My position with Christ changed from an awareness to now it changed to him being my savior. It changed to God being my father. It changed from me from just being his creation to now becoming his child. It changed from his Holy Spirit convicting me to now his Holy Spirit moved inside of me. It changed from God being that the father who, who, who had judged me one day to becoming my heavenly father who now I could go to in prayer every day of my life that relationship with God changed that night when I got saved now listen to me Be because I got saved get this because I'm in Christ getting saved changed the way I looked at things for instance the Bible started making sense to me the scripture says that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When before the Bible didn't make sense to me, now all of a sudden the Bible started making sense to me. You know why? Because the, the Holy Spirit lived inside. Now I could read the Bible. Now it started making sense because I had someone on the inside telling me what I was reading inside of this book. Now I didn't need somebody else to explain because now a Holy Spirit could explain it because I'm in Christ I had a faith that God could take care of my future well it's interesting when I got saved I was just a young boy but all of a sudden now I started having faith in God why because I put my faith in trust for my eternity and if God could take care of my eternity certainly he could take care of my daily needs and I saw that, and all of a sudden, everything started changing. All of a sudden, I had an assurance of my eternity. I didn't wake up one day and think I was saved, go to sleep the next day, and that, that night, wake up the next day and think I was lost. Every day, I woke up knowing that I was saved on my way to heaven, never doubting. Why? Because I had a Savior that lived inside of my heart. See, I didn't have to be good to be saved. I didn't have to go, be good to continue being saved. It was the fact that Jesus Christ was my Savior. I'm saved. I'm saved forever. Boy, the eternity, that, that confidence that, that came inside of my soul because Christ saved me from my sins. Oh, it was exciting. It was exciting. My record went from condemned to justified. Are you with me? I was condemned on my way to hell. Now I'm justified on my way to heaven. I was condemned, going to have to pay for my sins, but now, I'm, now it's just as if I have never sinned. Why? Because Jesus came into my heart. My final home went from hell to heaven. See, my position changed from being on the outside of Christ to being in Christ because therefore if any man be in Christ, hey, Christ saved me. I'm saved forever. Our text verse says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I want you to circle the word if in that verse. I want you to put this right beside that word if. What you do with Christ. He says, if any man be in Christ, get this now, you have a choice this morning what you're going to do with Christ. 
Everybody has a choice. At some point in everyone's life, we have to make a choice. What, what are we going to do with Jesus Christ? Everybody has to make that choice. Listen to me. I had to make that choice as a young boy in Conway, South Carolina. And there has to be a point in your life you have to determine, am I going to accept Christ as my Savior or am I going to reject him and try to make it myself? But I got news for you. If you're going to try to do it yourself, you'll never make it to heaven. You try to do it yourself, you'll fail. You'll find yourself burning in a, in a devil's hell forever. Why? Because it's not about you. It's not what I've done. That, big, that word if, that two-letter word if, that's a big word. Why? It's what we do with Christ. But he says, if any man. I want you to circle the words any man, and I want you to draw a line, and I want you to write your name. Write your name. Sometimes we have a hard time putting our name in the Bible. Amen. Therefore, if Alan be in Christ, he's a new creature. Therefore, if any man, who's that? You. Be in Christ. He is a new creature. She is a new creature. Listen to me. Sometimes, hey, you got to stop saying, making the gospel for everybody. You got to come down and make it for you. You got to understand it's not, it is somewhere in my life. I've got to come down to Alan Domley and I've got to say, okay, what am I going to do with Christ? What, when, what, what, what are we going to do right now at this moment with Jesus Christ? What are we going to do? He says, if. What you do with Christ. Any man, that's you. B, I want you to circle the word B, put this beside it. Salvation is always present. It's right there. If any man be, it's always right there. You say, what do I have to do? Well, R Romans 6.23 says, but the gift of God. Hey, it's a matter of receiving. God's not hiding the gift somewhere. You with me so far? God has a gift right there. He says it's right there. It's present. It's there for you. See, there's no mistake that you came this morning. God knew exactly that I was going to preach on this this morning. He knew that you was going to be here for whatever reason. Somebody invited you. Somebody brought you here. And God knew that the gospel was going to be preached this morning. Why? Because he's saying, okay, it's right here. Now, it's a gift. It's your choice. What are you going to do with that gift? He says, if. That's what you do with Christ. Any man, write your name right next to that. B, salvation is always present. In, circle that, put this beside it. Your position with Christ. Amen. Your position with Christ. Now listen. What is your position with Christ right now? Are you in Christ or are you looking on the outside? If I asked you right now, if you died right now, are you 100% sure that your past present and future sins are all paid for you say preacher i don't know that for sure i hate to tell you this but you're at the right place because you're about ready to get the answer if you don't know the answer to that question you're on the outside you're on the outside you say preacher i don't think you ought to say that i would not be a good preacher if i wasn't honest with you because the truth is this morning, somebody's got to be honest enough with you to tell you there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And everybody has to make the choice while they're alive what they're going to do with Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a gift that sits right there. And, and, and God says, you got to give, you got to determine your position. He says, God, hey, listen, Christ already made the payment. All you have to do is make the choice. Amen. But notice what he says. If any man be and, oh, I love this next word. It's not a word, it's a name. Christ. Circle that name and put this right next to it. Your solution to eternity. Your solution to eternity. Notice, he did not say if any man be in the baptistry. Come on, somebody help me out. Notice, he did not say if anybody be in Maranatha Baptist Church. 
No. Notice he did not say if anybody go to a confessional booth and confess their sins to the priest. No, no, he didn't say that. Notice he did not say if any man be at being good works. No, he said if any man be in who? In Christ. Why? Because Christ is your only answer for eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, you can try every other solution, but I'm telling you, you'll fail if you try every other solution because Jesus Christ is the only answer for your eternity somewhere in your life. You've got to make Christ your personal Savior for your sins. But I want you to, I want you to notice the way he didn't stop. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Circle the words, new creature, put right next to it, hope. Hope. Say, preacher, I need something to change. Christ is your hope. Christ is your hope. You've been fighting it long enough by yourself. It's time that you stop trusting yourself and what you've done and say, okay, I want to put my faith and trust in Christ. Why? He gives hope. He says, he, he, he says, oh, he says he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Underline that phrase, put right next to it, victory. Victory. Listen. Not only does God give us hope at salvation, but he gives us victory over death. Oh, you say you're afraid of dying? Oh, I don't, I'm not looking forward to that day that I have to go through the, the, the pains of death. But I'm not afraid of what happens after death. Say, why? Because I know where I'm going. I've got victory because I've, hey, hey, Christ conquered death for Alan Domley. I accepted that gift. I'm going to heaven. This body may go inside the grave. Worms may eat up this body. But the soul's going to go to heaven and live in heaven forever. Why? Because Jesus Christ has given me that hope. And that victory. That's not all. Then he says, behold, all things become what? New. Underline that phrase. Just put this right next to it. New outlook. You get saved, you'll, you'll see things differently. So how do you know? Because the Holy Spirit moves inside. You see, our problem, you see, what we're trying to do, see, all this happens when you get in Christ. Now, let me tell you what this verse doesn't mean. This verse doesn't mean that you turn a new page in your life. See, too many people are saying, well, let me turn a page in my life and then I'll get saved. You can't turn the page in your life. Do you understand we've been trying to turn the page in our life time and time and time again? When are you going to stop turning the pages and trust Christ? We're over here. Well, I've got, to, I've got to stop this, and I've got to stop this. Can I help you out? God, God says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by what? Grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. He says, he says and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of what? Works. Lest any man should boast. I got news for you. It takes work to be good. Amen. Especially you, Mr. Allen. <laughs> huh? You know when that person cuts you off on the highway? Yeah, take the halo off right now. You are sitting pretty good until we start going down this road. They cut you off on the highway, and it's hard to be good. Because you want to let them know what you think about them. Come on now. You know, you, you, you've been waiting for the car to pull out of the, out of the parking lot. Come on. And when they pull out, they block you, and somebody takes your parking spot. It's hard to be good. Come on. It's hard to be good, sir, when you come home and your wife has thrown your favorite t shirt away. It's hard to be good. It's hard to be good, man, when your husband comes home and doesn't understand what you've done with your hair. Why you women ask us about that? I don't know. Do you see anything different? Um, um, no. Um, you know, you know it's, it's just an unfair question. It's hard to be good. 
You can't turn a new page in your life to be in Christ. People have tried to turn the new page and failed. Why? Because you can't turn it. Hey, this verse also doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean that you got religion. Well, I want to. I want to join the church. You know, I, that's why I want to. I want to get religion. I'm gonna. I want to get. I want to become a part of the church. I got news for you. You can join this church and still go straight to hell. Why? This church won't save you, and neither will any other church. Too many people. I, I've knocked on doors. You all know the uh, visitors. I, I. I. I love talking to people about Jesus. I love it. Boy, I knock on doors. I tell people, I say, if you die today, you're sure you go to heaven. Well, I go to this church. Didn't ask you that. That church, listen to me. If that's the case, which church is it? Good night. Listen to me. It has the church. Listen to me. The church, one is a people. It's not a building. And I'm telling you right now, what happens is we, we got to understand that, hey, if I trust a church, what if the church changes us, my eternity change? Listen, it doesn't mean that you turn a new page in life. It doesn't mean that you got religion. It also doesn't mean that you can live any way you want to without consequences. Listen to me, you got saved, but that doesn't mean you can go out there and live like the devil and not expect God to punish you. There are churches out there that say, well, you know, everything's paid for. And yes, everything's paid for at salvation. But there's still consequences to sin. You don't believe me? Go speed down the road. And when the patrolman puts on his lights and pulls you over, you just look at that patrolman and say, I'm under grace. I've already, I'm already saved. And that patrolman says, wonderful. You're going to be a few dollars short uh, while you're saved. Because you're going to pay. Because why? There's consequences. There's always consequences. Just because I get saved doesn't, doesn't mean I can go live like the devil. No, 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 no. You got to understand, I'm saved. I'm a new child. I'm God's child. Now he's going to punish me. But this verse also doesn't mean, guess it now, it also doesn't mean that you can inherit eternal life. I'm a preacher's kid. I'm not saved because I'm a preacher's kid. My wife's a missionary kid. Poor missionary. But anyway, listen, that is it. But she didn't inherit eternal life. We got a lot of preacher's kids in this room this morning. Not every one of them, if they're saved, they're not saved because of daddy. They're saved if they're saved because they put their faith and trust in Christ to be their Savior. This verse also doesn't mean that only a select few can go to heaven. You know what I love? He says, if any man. Jerome, that means you. Yeah, that means you. Praise God. Brother Wilson, that means you. That's hard to believe. Is that true? If you ever want to meet Mr. Wilson and, and Dennis and Menace right there. But anyway, the great Bible story. But anyway, hey, he says any man. He didn't say what creed. He didn't say what race. He didn't say what background. He didn't say what pocketbook. He said any man. Well, I'm glad God didn't say you had to be a certain race, had to be a certain skin color, had to have a certain amount of money, had to have a certain type of clothes, you had to have a certain type of car. God just said, hey, it don't matter what you are, what your background is. He says if you just put your faith and trust in Christ to save you, hey, he'll save you. Amen. So what does it mean to be in Christ? It means this. It means you're saved eternally. Eternally. John chapter 10, verse 28, he says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. He says, when you get saved, 
you get eternal life. But it also means that things change inside. That being in Christ, you become a new creature. You have different desires. Some of you, when you got saved, you know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, what you once used to do, it, you, 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 some of you are so worried about, well, if I get saved, what is everything going to happen? Don't worry. God will change you on the inside. Don't worry about it. That's not all. It means you're born again. It means, get this now, you're reconciled to Christ. It means this. It means you're made righteous in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God says, when you get saved, get this now, he says, you're justified, you're righteous. How much? Eternally. This is what I love. There's a difference between the word Everlasting and the word eternal. Everlasting means from this point forward, there's no end. Eternal means there's no beginning. There's no end. And when God says he gives you eternal life, you know what he did? He put his record on your account. So when God the Father looks at your record, he looks this way. And he looks this way. And he says, I don't see anything but the payment of Christ on their account. They're righteous in Jesus Christ. Righteous. You say, preacher, how do I get in Christ? I'm not sure if my past, my present, and my future sins are all paid for. I hope they are, but I'm just not sure. I can't, I don't know. I'm just not sure if I've been born again. How do I know that? Let me simply go through it and we'll be done. One, you have to realize you are a sinner. You're a sinner. God says, for all have sinned. You know, Brother Nick, that means you're a sinner, and so am I. Huh? Brother Mark, you're a sinner, so am I. Brother Davin, you're a sinner, more than you know. <laughs> In fact, you, anyway, I'll get us up right there. So am I. Brother Jason? We all know you're a sinner. But anyway, you're a sinner, so am I. All have sinned. All. When you sin, what is sin? Sin is breaking the laws of God. God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, what's God's glory? His righteousness. Okay. So anything that comes short of God's righteousness is sin. Hmm. I wonder if there's anybody in here that's matched God's righteousness this week. Hmm? No. You know why? We're humans. Even our good things that we do fall short of God's righteousness. When I try to do good, I'll find myself not doing it enough. All have sinned. You've got to realize you're a sinner. Second, you've got to realize that you have no hope without Christ. The wages of sin is death. But may I tell you this, you've got to also realize this. God loves you enough to pay for your sin. Across this auditorium this morning are people with all different types of backgrounds. Some have criminal records, some don't. Some, ha some were in drugs and some were not. Some have grown up clean. Some have grown up trying to get away from the drug. We've all got different type of backgrounds. Some have, have a bigger bank account. Some have poor bank accounts. But I'm got, i got to tell you this morning, it don't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how deep you've gone into sin. May I tell you, there's a God in heaven who loves you enough to die on the cross to pay for your sins. You said God would love me? 
Absolutely. He loved you that he would leave heaven. To come down to the golden streets of heaven. To come down to the dusty streets of earth. He would leave the mansions of heaven to come down to the cottages of earth. He left the praise of heaven to come down to the sneer of man. Just because he loved you. He says somebody's got to pay for your sin. Because the wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ said I had to pay for sin. Only he could do that. Jesus Christ, when he hung there on the cross, when he shed his blood for you and I, it was for your sins, for my sins. Every sin that we would ever do, past, present, future, was paid for by Jesus Christ. He could have hung on the cross, and he could have said, I'm done as a spit on him and as they would smite him and as they plucked his beard from his face he could have called 10,000 angels and said I'm done I'm coming down but thank God Jesus loved us enough to stay on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood to atone for our sins and he gave us life they put him in a grave three days later he came out, conquered death because he loves you. And he says, I love you enough, get this now, to give you this gift. Would you receive it? Romans ten thirteen says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I want you to listen very carefully to me. He did not say, for whosoever shall get baptized. I talked to a lot of people. Are you saved? Yeah, I got baptized. No, 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 no. I believe in baptism, but that doesn't save you. That doesn't save you. If you think this baptistry will take you to heaven, you're going to wake up one day in a place you don't want to be in. Because this doesn't save you. He didn't say for whosoever shall be good. He said for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Forty-five years ago. Almost forty-six years ago now. As a young boy. I knelt down beside my couch. And I said, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know because I've sinned, I deserve hell. But I don't want to go there. So right now, I accept your payment on the cross and the blood that you shed to be the payment for my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And take me to heaven when I die. And that moment that I did that, that I prayed that prayer to Christ... I put my trust in Christ. I was placed in Christ. And I became that new creature. All things passed away. Behold, all things became new. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You can make that choice right there in your pew. You don't have to become a member of this church to get saved. Some of you, you may have put on a good facade for a long time, and you, you, but now maybe for the first time you realize this morning that, now I, I've just never done that. Then why don't you take care of it today? Today. Today. Make Christ your Savior today. Ask Him to save you. Father.